Hi hey guys, welcome. My name is Nate. This is chapter 19 that we really left off. Let's continue. Shit, shit, shit. Yes, curses were almost as loud as the pop something outside of the car. Harvey swerved the car hard, jerking, my, jerking me in my seat until the belt dug into my neck. Bullets hit the side of the car, sounding like the cracks of fireworks. I grew up in Rutherford. I grew up in Rutherford neighborhoods in the city, and the sound was familiar. The fear was familiar. No, no words to speak, no breath to breathe, nothing to do but squeeze my eyes shut and grip the edge of my of the seat until my knuckles were white. Harvey, get us. The fuck out of here. Trying, boss. How we shoved it back. Dragging the steering wheel hard again, so we raced down in adjacent street. Young <laughs> clipped his belt and lunged to my side, pushing my head down as more bullets spelted the, the, the back of the car. Whoever was shooting had moved from the side to behind us, aiming for the back windshield. Just arms wrapped our round Jill's arms wrapped around my shoulders holding me as far down to the seat as he could who the hell was shooting at us Murphy Seamus and the other men he broke the contract with some other enemy Harry jerked again and Jill's body slammed one way while mine slammed against the door something screamed out in pain, but I could barely tell what or where. Once Jill raked himself with one hand on my leg, he stole a glance out the back windshield. Give me the piece in the, in, in the glove box, Jill commanded to his driver. Harvey fumbled for a second, glancing anxiously in his mirrors for a s sign of the car following us. He handed Jill's a black gun in my stomach, sinking even further into the sink, sink even further into a pit as Jill cocked it. Stay down, he muttered to me once. He noticed my stare. You got another one of those? I had another. I got at the gun. Jill's brows raised and she seemed ready to respond by hurrying her. To him, where do you want me going? Back, uh, uh, back to the hotel? Harvey asked, his voice notably calmer than it was only moments ago. The other car seemed to be gone. We were on the way out of the city now. The opposite direction of the early hotel. Near glance back out the window again and then his eyes fixed on me. I was still hunched against the seat cushions. So my head was invisible above the chair. A drug then flushed through my veins, causing my chest to rise and fall rapidly. Something flashed in his eyes at the sight. No, Jill finally said to to Lake Med, the, the cabin. Things will, will be hot tomorrow and we'll need to lie low. If you see the car again, Harvey, tell me. The tongue was brusk. Oh, business now that the shooting finally ceased. He pulled his phone out before pressing it against his ear. His fingers squeezing it so tightly, I wonder how it didn't crumble beneath his hand. Still, he was calm enough to bark orders to keep checking out the back window and to hold the gun cock ready in his hand. We were just shut. We were just shut at leaving the party. Jill spoke into the phone, not bothering with the greeting. Yes, she was me. We're going to lay low. Fuck, it probably was no. No, fuck. I'll do it when I return. You too. You sh he, he shoved the phone back into his pocket and ran his fingers through dark curls, his head falling back against the seat with a Shadow sigh. I swear to who? I, I don't know, he inter interjected before I could finish. But I find out. His tone was low, 
just like a threat and more like a promise. My eyes flicked to the gun in his hand and then back up to his face. If I had any doubt before, the look on his face would have wiped it clean. And then I could do as how we drove us to whatever where we were going was sit back against the seat, calm my pounding heart, and hope that nobody will be caught in the crossfire when you finally find out who it was. At some point, driving during the drive, I must have dozed off because the next time I opened my eyes, Jill was opening my car door. We arrived. Miss Knight, he whispered and reached his hand out of mine. I didn't hesitate before t taking it and then letting him pull me out of the car. Harvey nodded once a year before t taking the car back down the long way the car back down the long driveway. We apparently just driven down. Though it was hard to make out the precise features of the house through the dark and in my sluggish state, I could tell that cabin was not a description and did not a description that did it justice. Where is Harvey going? I asked, fighting a John. Almost instinctively, Joe led me Joe led me to walk in front of him, his back shielding me from whatever assaultants he imagined would come up the driveway. He's going to grab some supplies for the next few days, clothes, food, he glanced down me. Be ashamed to ruin that be ashamed to ruin that dress. Days, I asked in an attempt to ignore the heat that rose to my cheeks at his, at his tone. Gil unlocked the door instead of answering and ushered me inside. Maybe tomorrow I will have time to look around, but I'm sure it was a beautiful house. Maybe when the sun was up and it wasn't the same day that I just being shut at. The sound of gunshots still rang in my ears, but I tried to blink them away. Gil let me bleary eye and jump. Be at every little sound, down to the end of the hallway. This is our room, he said, nodding his head inside. There is a shower to, to your right. Harvey should be back by the time you're out. If not, there are robes. Our room? He urged a bro problem. Uh, yeah, kind of. Then why did I make it sound like a question? He lips just quirk in that amused half smell he always seemed to wear now. The room wasn't huge, but it was big enough to fit the king's a king with a within an end suite bathroom and closet. Still with the way Jill's presence stifled the air, this room would be far too small for the two of us to share. If I wanted to survive by the end of of it, that is. You were shut at. You were shut at today in Nocina. Do not think that I will let you sleep alone after that. My thumb picked at a loose thread on the duvet, rather than looking up into molten gold eyes. You were shut at too, I murdered his cough, which is exactly why I need you to to protect me tonight. I glare at him. Ha <laughs> ha. Small. Some small part that reside in my core woke at his words. It woke every time his voice lowered and his eyes simmered as they were now. I was an adult woman. I could sleep in the same bed as a man platonically. It, it wasn't a, a big deal. If, some, if anything, our, our sleeping arrangement could be the, the next right step toward building trust. You're not even going to offer to sleep on the floor like a gentleman? Don't be ridiculous, he chuckled lowly. I'm not a gentleman. Well, you're certainly good at pretending to be one. He took a step closer to where I sat on the bed and, and already the, the room seemed to shrink the closer he got. His palms flattened on the bed to either side of me, trapping me in the prison between his arms. You ought to shower some before I did decide that you need protection in here too. He hugged his head to the side 
got eyes scanning my face. Jeers and Mew's smile told me he was only teasing. How he was capable of teasing after being shot at today was one of the reasons I felt my shoulders release. It was once of tension. It was tension. That was normal. This was how we were supposed to be. If he wanted to push if he wanted to push down the events of today and cover it with our strange flirtatious game, then I could do that too. You don't need an excuse. I blink up at him when you have an open invitation. As if to prove as if to prove my point, I separated my knees, allowing him to show if he dared to look. My J. Bonnie Russell was too much of a gentleman to ever break his gaze away from my eyes. But his lips parted and the pulse at his jugular quickened. He wanted to. What's more, I wanted him to. So maybe I'll just give him a little push. The hem of my dress hiked further up my thigh as I opened my knees a little wider until they brushed the side of his legs. My eyes never f- felt his face, watching for the Tiniest micro expression to give away was what he was thinking. It was in the tightness of his mouth and vein at his throat, where I saw that he tried to hide what he throat where I saw what he tried to hide. What he was so very good at hiding. Mr. Russell, I began suddenly ready to taunt him with another tiny veil. A you famous him. The tongue died in my throat when he when his hand wrapped around my jugular to pull me forward until his lips crushed mine. The feeling of, of victory gave way to a stronger heater feeling, one that seemed to swell with his other hand, tangle itself in my hair to kiss me deeper. His kiss was like his demeanor, demanding, powerf- powerful, stiffening. My whole body felt like he was holding a match to it and then dosing it every time his tongue flicked against mine. My fingers lifted to him. My fingers lifted to him, fumbling for the buttons on his jacket to shove it out of his broad shoulders. In his next breath, he pulled away, drunk just long enough to discard the damn thing onto the floor before his lips were back to mine, before he stole the breath from my lungs, before he grabbed my hips to throw me back onto the bed, before his lips dragged across the collar of my throat, before his knees settled on the bed between my thighs, my dress hiked up to my hips to reveal what he didn't try to pick up before. Before. I mean... Nagia, at least sh- shut the damn door, Giovanni. I pushed you off me, shooting my f- journey to my feet, and, and prepared to run. My, ba- my, brain, my brain barely registered the stranger's face and the phenomenon quality to the voice. A young woman who was standing in the doorway, a sack of towels in her hand. She tossed them into the bed with a sigh, and Gio bar- barely moved from where he hoped word over for me only seconds ago. He shifted to smile lazily at the woman by the door. Martina, what a person surprise, the woman rolled his eyes. Surprise, you in my house, asshole. She looked at me, brown eyes, scanning me up and down. Don't use all the hot water. And she turned on her heel and she turned on her heel and left. I whipped my eyes toward where Julio still lounged on the bed, looking unaffected. He chuckled a little at my gaping and tossed a towel to me. My cousin Martina, he explained, standing and brushing his legs as though our were little though make obsession was a piece of lint he could shake out of his clothes. This is her house. The others will be here soon. If you don't want to see them, I recommend you shower and get into bed. 
My goddamn cheeks betrayed me again as I felt colored rise to them. At least the lack of restraint and eagerness on his part made more sense now. There were other members of the Russell family in his house, and there will be more coming tonight. He knew someone might catch us. He was still playing the game, and I had forgotten for a moment what the rules were. A warning, a warning would there be nice, I growled. He cocked his head, a warning for what? My face twisted into a skull. Did he want me to admit that I would have kissed him even if he even if there wasn't anyone around to fake it for, that I would have done a lot more than kiss him. Well, fuck him and fuck that. I turned away into the bathroom without another word. My cheeks still flushed a mix between anger and what we started on the bed and my inside is still quiet from the scene. It may have been rude, but I barely paid heed to what Martina had worn. I let the hot water run over my hair and over my shoulder for 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 far too long. It had been a long night, and I wanted to wash it off me. It, the sounds of bullets hitting the cars was a distant memory, but there was something else I needed the hot water for which was not so distant. My thighs squeezed together, trying to wash the painful need away. Try as I might, Giovanni Russell had a touch that couldn't be scrubbed away. When I left the bathroom, a stack of clothes was set out on the bed with an assortment of toiletries. Some I needed and some that I didn't even know existed. Naturally, because it was the Russell's. It all looked expensive. I slid into the silky shorts and tank top. Said Harvey had acquired from God knows where and all but collapsed into the bed. For a funny moment, my head hit the pillow. I was dead to the world, so deeply asleep that I didn't feel a shift in the mattress late at, at night, nor again early in the morning. When I did wake, when I did wake, the sun was blazing through the window, lighting up the wood which covered the room. It took me a long moment to remember where I was, remember what were. Remember what happened last night. Remember what. Remember why the other side of the bed was undone. Familiar voices struggled down the hallway. One feminine voice and three masculine. One with a deep tenor that woke me up. More than the sun, light streaming in and coffee. I smell coffee. My nose and my addiction were the two things that finally managed to make me get out of bed. Emerging out of the bedroom, I followed the bitter smell all the way to the kitchen that you and I must have passed on our way in. Three familiar men, Cass, Jacob, and Jill, were sitting at the farm-style table in the corner of the room, and all of their heads snapped up as I turned the corner. To look away as quickly as they looked, one lingered. I was suddenly sick. He was that my red hair was in unruly mess, and that I was wearing pajamas. Martina was praying an egg and t turned to stare at me in, in, in a daily in lounge pants. She looked considerably less frightened. Good morning, I said, trying, trying for a polite smile, but it, it must have looked pain. I nodded. They told her where the pot of coffee can I? Martina. Joe cleared his throat from the table. This is Miss Knight, my girlfriend. His words didn't waver over the word, and I had to give him credit for that because mine certainly would have. I was so pissed at him for, for yesterday, so I didn't even spare him a look. And Sabina, it's uh, nice to meet you again. Irene, Arch Abrell, it's, it's certainly nice to meet you now when you dress isn't up to your belly button. Both Cass and Jacob snorted, barely hiding their laughs. Irene seemed pleased that she embarrassed me. You're probably right, I, I, I'm used, filling myself a cup of coffee. 
though if you waited a couple of minutes you probably would have met me you probably would have met more of me this time Cass and Jacob didn't bother heading their laps and Gio choked on his coffee Haha, <laughs> thanks for reading. Thoughts, stay safe and be kind, my my, my friends. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye, guys. Take care.